big mess. Enough's enough. We're not getting abused anymore. Okie dokie, so earlier today the property manager came down to take a look at the leak we had last week when the big storm hit. It looks to be, thankfully, not a roof issue but a drainage issue. It looks like the drain was a bit clogged when the amount of volume of water came down at once, couldn't handle it and it just started overflowing and came obviously streaming down onto our floor and sofas. When they cleaned the drain out, um, hopefully it shouldn't happen again. My, my biggest concern is we're rewiring the whole of the downstairs and putting new lights in. And if this was to happen again, we'd then hit the new electrics, which we obviously paid thousands for and they'd be ruined. We've got a couple more meetings later today. Uh, James is flying to Spain today. Uh, he's going to see his girlfriend and daughter who are there just for a couple of days, coming back on Wednesday. I'll be kind of running the show as usual um, till he's back. Looking through CVs uh, for new showroom staff. And we got 114. Big demand to work here at Joseph James, what can I say? Big demand. Great work environment. Hello, Joseph James. Good afternoon, Josephine. No. Oh. When you're onto the phone, so this is my meeting. Joseph James now. Just Joseph James. I'm trying to build the Joseph James brand. So not Joseph James Furniture. Joseph James Furniture Outlet. That's why people get confused. That's why we tried the new logo. Oh, did I say? Joseph James Furniture. So we've never, we're not even called, no, we've never been called Joseph James Furniture, that's not even one of the correct dancers. Isn't the sign outside the John Stone Furniture? No, Joseph James Furniture Outlet. <laughs> What's going on, Darren? Right, mate, we're changing it all to white, and all like the skirts and that to blue to the new sign. I thought it was going pretty well, that. What kind of paint we got here? It's emulsion, white emulsion. I thought we were using the masonry now. Well, we're not supposed to be saying that, are we? Because everyone, if anyone knows that we're using masonry inside on these walls, they bleed and laugh their head off, mate. <laughs> you use it on outside. Do I know you do, but I'm saying we have issues. Oh, we, 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 use, have, we, we have an issue with it because it was yeah. too thin. We're using masonry paint. <laughs> <also>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, use, we, use ma we are using masonry paint. It's yeah. thicker, it's working better. It's not even, it's, it's not that crazy expensive, though. It's only uh, 35 yeah, quid. It's supposed to be exterior, isn't it? Yeah, but, it's supposed yeah. to be exterior, but... But it's doing fine, isn't it? Yeah. Better than the interior was doing. Well, I guess so, mate. But yeah, and um, anything else? How long do you think it's going to take? All painting inside. Without doing deliveries, four or five full days, and that's because by the time you get to the end, this is with the skirts as well, the glossing and everything. Because when you've done it all, you're probably gonna you're gonna start from the beginning again, do it all again. Because what, doing second coats? Of course. Look at it. I like to do my second coats at the same time as my first coats. No, it don't work like that because it takes two hours for it to dry in. Are you concerned about spillages on the sofas? Well, yes, I am. That's why we got it all covered like Tarps. this. That's what's take. That's what make it take so all. much longer. Are we gonna do this carpet as well? I'm gonna be doing that, yeah. Siobhan's going to go out and get me two more tins of contact to do save one more packet of blades. What, we've run out of glue? We've got about a quarter of a tin left. Yeah, I, I remember I used like three to do that when I do that. But that, don't forget, I don't just do the edges, I do everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you start getting the carpet doing all that, yeah. you're not going no contacts yeah. on it. Do it right. It's got to be done right, because it's a lot of people walking through here, you don't want them breaking the neck on the, on the edge of it, do you? Well, not the idea. It's not like, it, like, like um, hundreds of people walk through here, won't they? Thousands, Aaron. Thousands. Thousands every minute. Give me that old Trafford. Oh, are you a United fan? Well, I'm sure. So, over the weekend, a good idea I thought of was, you know when you came in with your matching trainers and socks? The green ones? Maybe that should be your thing. No. It's not a terrible idea, is it's it? It's really not great, though. So this is all stock that's going back to a supplier. Hot, big mess. They sent it like three weeks ago. Didn't know it was coming. It wasn't one that we worked with where we know the price before it gets here. Pricing was way off, couldn't agree with price for like three weeks. So it's been a nightmare, it's clogging up our warehouse space. We just arranged a lorry to come take it back to them. They don't want it. I'll fight for the best deal for your customer if you yeah. charge them. Absolutely. We'd have to make it really expensive, like four grand corner sofas, which are now like you can't really sell. And the relationship's damaged to say the least. It, all they've got to do is act as we've told them they need to act, which is pricing for all these enemies was because they don't price uniformly like our other suppliers. We price per seat, these price every item individually which doesn't work when you don't tell us before we're picking them because you can't send us something and say, here's your load, right, that'll be two grand, that'll be one grand, and it's just way off what we can sell it for. Three weeks is taking a hell of a lot of time in our processing yeah. to find that it's not suitable. Most of this stuff looks pretty good to go, is it ID carded? Well, it's all ID carded, except for this one that's on the floor, which I don't know why it's on the floor. 
Well, I was going to say the lighting here looks very good. That you might be able to photograph some of it. Yeah, here. probably need to do some repairs on this. Three cheers. We're trying to source the right screws for it because it came without the right screws, which is proving to be an absolute nightmare. So it's an expensive set, that. Yeah. Screws for this. Yeah. Take your bag. <laughs> <laughs> Any more than need to buy is a... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to source them at the moment. Use a wagon. Not for wagon. Um, I'm going to deal with this. Sent me a message saying, Hi Siobhan, hope you're well. This bit's not very nice about you. It's very disappointing the way Joe has dealt with this last delivery. We never have had anything like this with James. I would appreciate if you could pay the invoice by the closer plate today and all the best with trading in the future. If all the world's supplier, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, I think that's a little bit harsh. A little bit harsh? Yeah, I do. Sends a whole lorry full of stock without any pricing, not a single item priced. Then for two weeks, doesn't respond to any communication because she's on holiday, slash sick, slash her daughter's sick. That is now you run a business. I, we've got to be stored, photographed, cleaned, all these items. The ones that were on the washing line were for a sofa that was going back to her. We put them back on the cushions. All the stock going back to her. I've had to arrange transport to send it back to her. All because she wouldn't answer calls, she wouldn't just want to text. She kept saying, I'll sort it tomorrow, I'll sort it tomorrow. It's just it's not good enough. So we've gone from being flexible to like, these are the rules. If you go outside of these rules, we're going to send everything back. So I can understand why she's disappointed. I'm not saying it's right to be disappointed, but I'm saying I can understand why. At the moment, there's lots of easy rides that are coming to an end and people aren't taking that well. Food guys, parking guys, this supplier, sometimes you need to you know, stamp down with an authoritarian hand and say enough's enough, we're not getting abused anymore. Welcome back sir. Thank you, it's an honour, privilege. Lots of building work to do, main project being the mattress display racks. So let's take a quick look here. Obviously these are all in China, they're all made of steel. Functions are saying that's exactly what we're looking to do. Pull it out, customer can pull it down themselves, try it on push it back up, unassisted by any sales staff. How are you going to have this work with multiple different size mattresses? So we did have different designs for different sizing. And my thoughts are, I think this is fairly simple. That's just a frame. The complicated bit is this, isn't it? Yeah. I've got plenty of shit I need to do. C can I put this on the computer for you? Yeah. You have a look through. Tell me how much it's going to do. The roofer said the reason they pushed it back a week is because, because of the recent rain and how the job they're doing at the moment, which is a fair response, but really, when you work in Manchester, you should be expecting rain. It's only only eight panels, remember, that they're doing. They're only replacing the clear panels. I don't know, because like, we're putting insulation in as well. You don't want a load of f***ing on you. That's quite a good timing, isn't it? We can't put it back much longer no. if it's going to take can't, a can't. week. Go get crafty. Situation update on the uh, supplier issue. We sent the stock back to the supplier. The suppliers got a bit angry, got there, <laughs> refused to unload the lorry, closed the doors, said they'll only load it if she never has to deal with me again and only <laughs> deals with Jay. I think she's obviously got a bit panicky, doesn't know what to do, so we tried to call her, she's getting a bit irate. I just, I'm just about to text him, hi, don't really know what your game plan is here. The stock is outside your warehouse. If the curry has to store it or re deliver again, we're just going to deduct any charges from your outstanding invoice. I would advise you unload the lorry. All of the coloured walls you can sell, I'm sure you've seen around the showroom, that were previously green and blue, we are going to change to this crisp and clean white, which should hopefully brighten the rooms a little bit. But it is turning out to be quite a job. Today has been a stressful day. Six o'clock and we are leaving the showroom. The supplier issue is taking up too much of my time, taking too much of everyone's time, calling Jeremy in the warehouse, Siobhan, James in Spain, like, it's ludicrous. It was never great, the relationship, as in they weren't really understanding how things needed to work. They were taking advantage of us in a lot of cases, pricing increasing, 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 and basically just eroding any real profit on loads. So there was just little motivation to us in the end to um, continue to work with them. And when they sent a full load of stock without pricing it, 
what we're supposed to do. I think our response was very fair. Well, here's what we'll pay or you know, take it back. The stock's clogging up our warehouse. You can't operate a business like that. If you have one person, a key man's not available, you've got to have someone else to deal with it. It's just from a business perspective, you know, I've got a responsibility to me, James, the company, the staff, to ensure we do well and grow. Um, and you know they all get paid at the end of the day, so we've got to do what's right for us. <laughs> this is absolutely what's right for us. It's not always pretty. It's not always, you know, about being kind. And you know, some feelings will get hurt, but toughen up. Toughen up. Good morning. It's Wednesday, and I am off to the warehouse. We've filled up supply issue. Don't really know how it's going to play out today. We will see. At the moment, there's a guy sleeping overnight, waiting to deliver the stock back to them, but they're refusing it. So it might come back to us. It might go to them. Who knows? just going to cost them more if they don't take it today because I'm just going to deduct it from the invoice. We've got some recruitment we need to do. I need to find another photographer, a sales assistant for the Stratford showroom, come for another warehouse operative. Hopefully today will be the final day of getting the consumer finance set up. Um, I know pretty much everyone's completed the training. I just need to get the iPads that arrived yesterday set up, make sure everyone knows how to use them, how to process uh, the finance application, etc. I think it'll be a bit tetchy at the start. Should be pretty smooth sailing after that. Just got the finance floor set up, training complete, Matthew over here, iPad set up. Training's almost complete, first test run. Certificate's already there though. Yeah. Certification all sorted. Now we're going to do a test run because we're going to start offering it tomorrow, for no pressure. A lot, I'm interested in the so sofa, love it, so comfy. I need the finance, um, what finance options? Right, we've got finance, uh, anything for 12 months up to 5 years, we've got an APR up to 14.9. Up to, it's, it's just 14.9. 14 14 it doesn't 14 go higher, it doesn't go lower, that's the only one. Should be. Uh, right, that's fine. Right. Uh, you have the option to put your deposit on as well to decrease your payments. As yeah. well, so, you can so you can deposit well. anything, yeah. what's the minimum deposit? Uh, I don't know. 10%. Is it 10% of what the sulfur is? No, no maximum, but oh. it will it might stop you going about above 60%. Okay. So minimum 10, but if you want to bring your monthly payment down, yeah. go higher and higher. And there is also an option to cash out early as well, so you can pay it off uh, earlier than what the contract says, but that's entirely up to you. With yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's down to us, yeah. Correct. Two loads of new stock, one from Pete, which um, I think James ordered over the phone today, and then the stuff from Dave that we picked out last week. Footstool holders, so this is a bit of an idea I had because of the wasted space we have in the showroom, especially our Stratford showroom, which whilst it's big for most showrooms, the more and more sofas we put in there, the tighter and the tighter the space gets. So to maximize space, we want to basically remove footstools from the floor because they take up very valuable square feet. They usually have a sofa and then a small footstool in between taking up space and then another sofa. So rather than that I wanted to have a stand which would basically have a base underneath that goes runs underneath the sofas, a small stem coming up and then a kind of a clamp stand on top that um, allows it to be adjusted depending on the size of the stool and then fix the stool on top so that it's displayed next to the sofa which it matches, easily visible, which is great because even at the moment because you put a footstool in between two sofas because it's low and in between two things that are bigger than it, a lot of people miss it and don't realise it comes with a footstool. But this way it's more presentable, takes up less space and more visually impressive. Throwing together a quick little a quick little design here. So the plan is, this um, strong base at the bottom, this thin little pole up here should be more than strong enough to support the, um, any size footstool on the top. The plan is we've got these extendable arms which you can pull out. This means that you can um, basically put any size footstool you want and it can be stored high, everyone can see it. A little quick cost up on metals for you with um, the basic rectangular beams and I reckon it'll be about 40 quid in materials, 30 quid in materials and there's only a couple of welding joints that need doing. But apart from that it should be... We've got the welding tools here. Yeah, we've, we? got, we've got welding tools here. We've got the here. welder here and Dayton producing <laughs> welding allegedly. Exactly, exactly, so we should be able to throw it together yeah, in not much time at all. I think I'll probably about 10. So I am back in lovely rainy Manchester, uh, I've been away in Spain for two days just to see the family but it's time to get back and get on with the work so I've been browsing on the work group chats as I've been away 
Looks like there's been a couple of issues. There's rumours of a little bit of a supplier problem as well, whilst I've been gone. So I'm going to go to the warehouse first, just check on them, see if I can help with anything, and then I'll head over to see Mr Shenton at the showroom so that he can run me through all of the issues with the supplier. So, Joe, tell me what's going on with this load that we received the other week. I had a conversation with the supplier today, obviously we've been disgruntled over the last few days yeah. and it's all been sorted. Um, they've agreed to pay all of the return delivery charges and take all the items off that we sent back. Good. Obviously they're not too happy, I mean, the relationship's fairly damaged, but from the things they were saying on the phone, I think it's salvageable. We may work together with them in the future, but if not, no qualms, we move on. But in the future, if we did, I think we could rekindle it and get it back. They somewhat understand that they were wrong and they'll work to you know, be better in the future and price things before they send them, which is fairly obvious in the business world. Sure. Yeah, uh, are, we, are we still okay to get into the property just to do a heating and electrical inspection? All right, I appreciate the update and that's good news. Interesting development, that. They said the council approved it yesterday, so. Oh, I don't know what to do. If I was you, I'd phone up now and get a viewing to stop for. I'd probably go back to do an electrical and heating inspection anyway, because I know there's issues with both. Hello? You right? Yeah, I just got a call from the agent um, for Stockport and the council approved it yesterday. I think that's the safe option, Joe, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I love Wigan too. Um, no, I, I don't worry, I love Wigan, I can't, what, I can't fault the place, but I just, I'm just I'm a bit concerned about it logistically. Yeah, but, but I can see it. obviously I do think it'll, someone else will get it if we were to you know, leave, it, leave it alone. Um, I think we have to take Stockport um, now. Uh, don't get me wrong, but obviously because it's only a, a you know, five-year lease max, I like the Wigan for its permanency. Unless you want to take both places. Yeah. We filmed here 12 months ago. The very first thing we filmed was uh, me and James touring the former JD unit there. Um, and now we're back 12 months, still looking for somewhere to stop for, and we found somewhere. This place just wasn't big enough. It's 10,000 square feet and we need bigger. Place with 1,090,000 square feet, so that's what we want. It's huge space, so obviously, this will be the sofa floor. Yes. So I'm going to put everything in here so people know this is what we sell when they come in. The, the building is owned by the council, and that's where we're going to be leasing it from. We're responsible and clear all the stuff that was here from the previous occupant, but I think a lot of it will sell, like mannequins, you always be able to sell. Retail shelving, extremely valuable. Tens of thousands of worth of um, retail fixtures in here. This isn't worth much, but that, 100 quid. We're watching 50 quid, I'll do your deal. First of all, this is my target date for commencing the lease. Given the scope of the work, probably at least two weeks after that before we can open. So maybe closer to mid-August to start September. Which isn't bad, September to November is our peak time. So I'll say something, not as big as I thought. I think it's a great start. This floor doesn't seem very big, but this is the floor that needs to show. Gunsler for a big thing to check work. Yeah, he was pretty certain he would. Right. I mean, sure, don't go check. We should use this as like the first holding bit where it gets stop checks in here. Yeah. So this is a loading bit now. Yeah. This is where all the stop will come in, or will always go out from. Open the floor, don't you? Lorry level as well, which is perfect. Now it's at the same height, just pulling it off out onto the lift. This is where our lorries will park overnight as well. That is a huge compactor. So put the, the electrical works right. Get a quote off them. See what the ballpark figure is, because I think you're in a lot of money. How much is that? Don't know. It's, 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 mo it's monumental. Yeah. Monumental was the word I was looking no. for. <laughs> Time to pick the lucky winner of our sofa giveaway. Thank you all for entering in last week's episode. It's great to see all the comments, likes, and new subscribers. We hope you tune in more in the future. Rather than picking a name out of a hat, we're gonna do it more in Joseph James style, and we're gonna pick a name out of the storage stool. We've got them all in here, and I'm gonna give them a quick mix around, so it's nice and fair before James picks out a name. Wait, make sure we get them all nice and close together. Let's give a good water off. Okay. Who will the lucky winner be? 
So the lucky winner is a Lillian Wilson 5688. Interesting name. Interesting name. And just to show you all there, that is the winner. So if you could please get in contact with us, you can either DM us on Instagram or you can give the showroom a call and we will get delivery booked in of your brand new free zinc sofa. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Please like and subscribe and comment down below any questions that you've got. In next week's episode, we're going to show you how we unload a 40 foot container full of sofas and give you a live reaction. We're also going to show you how we're converting a 20 foot shipping container into a food truck for outside of our showroom. And we'll give you an update on how things are progressing at our new 90,000 square foot showroom in Stockport. We'll see you next week. Last week's give. <laughs> I don't know. No, that makes no sense. Sorry, I thought you were doing it. 20 foot sweets. <laughs> Dude, you can see the focus. No, 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 no. So, Joe, I've just got back. Stop f***ing laughing. The guy's a c man. <laughs>